So in the interim, while peace still reigns free, I'm going to explore some of the scientific progress on my next generalization bomb. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the harmonic series, uh, the harmonic numbers, because what I want to do today is I want to come up with two different ways of representing the harmonic numbers. The nth harmonic number is the sum of the first n reciprocals of the integers, the natural numbers, sorry. Don't want to take the reciprocals of zero now, right? That would be bad. So I'm going to come up with technically two integral representations, but one's a substitution of the other, but so an integral representation and a infinite sum representation of the nth harmonic number. Now, the infinite sum one is going to reveal which real numbers, or more accurately, which complex numbers, cannot have harmonic numbers, like there isn't a particular zeth harmonic number, right? We'll find out exactly what those numbers are, because it turns out that it's very, very familiar, and it will play into the generalization video that's going to be the next attack on my contemporary and enemy. Flammable maths. So let's get into it. This is real simple. We're just gonna go headlong into it. So we need to remember something first. We need to learn a little bit about the geometric series, but not the whole geometric series. Only summing up to the nth term of the geometric series. And then we're going to take the integral of that. And that's going to reveal the harmonic numbers. So let's do it. My good friend Joe is with me, keeping me alive. Replenishing my blood. So, um, right at the get-go, let's just have a quick reminder of what the harmonic numbers are. Usually denoted capital H sub N. It is defined to be, the nth harmonic number is the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k. In that, we're starting at k equals 1 and going all the way up to n and adding up the reciprocals of those integers. So we've shown that as n tends to infinity, so does the harmonic numbers, right? It diverges very, very slowly. It diverges logarithmically. In fact, it and the logarithm have a limiting difference of the <clears throat> Euler-Mascheroni constant, or as it's properly known, the Euler-Macaroni constant. So these are the two facts, right? This is the definition of what the harmonic numbers are. And then the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth harmonic number minus the natural logarithm of n, this tends to and is defined to be the euler Mascheroni constant, which if you remember from my previous videos slash anything on the internet about it or anything that Papa Flammy has done, you'll get 0.577-ish, right? Not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to need sort of the incomplete geometric series at first. Nailing down an integral representation for the harmonic numbers, we want to consider the, the geometric series, but not all the way to infinity. We actually want to stop at n minus 1. So we're going to define s to be the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of x to the k. So we're just adding up powers of x that go from 0 to n minus 1. So x to the 0 is 1, x to the first is x, x to the second is x squared, of course, and we're adding all the way up to x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1, whatever n is, right? Since this is a finite sum by definition, x can be as big as you want and n can be as big as you want and you will always get a finite sum, however large it ends up being, right? So in this case, x is not restricted, there's no radius of convergence, everything converges because it's a finite sum. And then we're going to simply consider x times s, which is simply going to be this sum, the same exact sum, k equals 0 to n minus 1 of x to the k plus 1, right? All of these terms are just going to get multiplied by x. Since it's a finite sum, I can shift the terms as much as I want and rearrange them however I want because it will always converge. So the first term times x is x, so I'm just going to put that x right here underneath the first x in the first sum. This term times x is x squared, so I'm going to write it here, plus dot 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 plus the n minus third term times x is x to the n minus 2. Same for the x, the n minus second term gives x to the n minus 1, and then this one times x simply gives x to the n, right? That's pretty easy. And now we're simply going to subtract these two quantities from one another. We're going to end up with s minus x times s, which if we factor out s gives s times 1 minus x. And now we simply subtract like terms, right? x minus x is 0, x squared minus x squared is 0, etc., etc. And the only ones that are going to be left are 1 minus x to the n. Right? All the other terms canceled out. To solve for our original sum s, we simply have to divide by 1 minus x, and we get that our original sum, s, is equal to 1 minus x to the n over 1 minus x. And so this is what we need to start with. Right? We know that this is what our sum is equal to. 
what we're going to do, because this is a finite sum, we're actually going to integrate this, right, as a, as a function of x. So we just need to remember this fact, right? So I guess I could do this over here, right? I guess I have room for that. So I'm going to integrate s as a function of x, right? So this should really be s of x, right? So if I integrate from, from 0 to 1, this function here, right? So the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of x to the k dx. Well, what can we do? We can switch the sum and the integral because not only is an integral over a polynomial perfectly fine, but a finite sum over that. It's all, it's all conversion is what I'm trying to say. So we can simply switch the sum and the integral to get the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k dx. Well, the integral of x to the k is simply x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1. So we're going to end up with the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of, of x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 from 0 to 1, right? Plugging in 1, we get 1 to the k plus 1, which is 1, over k plus 1. Plugging in 0, we get 0 for all the terms. So what we really have is the sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 over k plus 1, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in k minus 1 for k. That way, both indices have to go up by 1 to compensate for that to make sure that the sum is still equal to that amount. So we simply plug in k minus 1 for k and increase the indices by 1, and you'll see what we end up with. We get from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k, which is, by definition, the nth harmonic number. If we integrate our sum s as a function of x from 0 to 1, we actually end up with the nth harmonic number, which is to say that we can integrate over this thing from 0 to 1, and we get the nth harmonic number. So given this fact from here, we know that if we did this, this implies that the integral from 0 to 1 of this function here, 1 minus x to the n over 1 minus x dx, is the nth harmonic number. So that's, that's fact number one, right? That's beautiful. That's a beautiful result, by the way. I just think that's absolutely wonderful. And if you uh, plug this into Desmos, you'll see a nice continuous curve that starts from negative one and goes to infinity. And it's perfectly well defined. Well, it starts for x greater than negative one, not equal to negative one. It goes down to negative infinity if n approaches negative one. It's perfectly well defined for everything from greater than negative one to positive infinity. So this is really nice for that. Okay, so now that we've established that this integral is definitely equal to the nth harmonic number, we're simply going to do a bit of a substitution. And what I'm actually gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm going to treat this like a continuous variable because when you plug this integral into, into Desmos and say we have the power of this thing running as like x, you know, the input x, and say I replace all of the x's in here with t, right? And so then we're saying, what's the x harmonic number, right, as a, as a continuous real variable? Then this is actually a valid representation of that and is equal to the nth harmonic number at integer values. So this is a totally valid continuation from the, from the natural numbers, or I guess you could say the zeroth harmonic number is zero because you're not adding anything, from the, from the uh, natural numbers to every real number greater than negative one, right? So this is a nice generalization. And what we're going to do is we're going to do just a little bit of a substitution here. So I'm going to erase all this stuff, and I'm just going to rewrite the fact that I've got. So we have that the harmonic numbers evaluated at x, right? So this is now a continuous real variable where x is greater than negative 1, is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t to the x over 1 minus t dt. And that's what we just proved using the not, com not quite complete geometric series, right? And all I'm going to do is do a slight substitution. I'm going to let t be replaced by 1 minus t, right? Which tells me that dt is going to be replaced by uh, negative dt. And this integral is now going to go from 1 to 0. Uh, so this is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to 0, because plugging in 0 into here gives 1, and plugging 1 into here gives 0, of 1 minus 1 minus t, right? I'm replacing t with 1 minus t, to the x over t negative dt. Naturally, we're going to use this negative 1 to simply reverse the order of integration, so we can actually eliminate that factor of negative 1 and sort of put it into the order of integration, so it now goes from 0 to 1. And we have this other sort of familiar way of writing this expression, which is quite nice. So now we have these two nice facts, right? We have these equivalent 
integral representations. Something, something, a new, a new fact that I'm going to do now that sort of um, highlights uh, a fact we're going to need later when I do my next generalization bomb against you, Flammy Boy. Bring it on. Bring it down. So, um, yeah, what are we going to do? We're going to integrate this from 0 to 1. We're going to integrate over this from 0 to 1. That's what we're going to do. So, let's do it. So we're going to take the integral from 0 to 1 of the harmonic numbers, which, because we know that the harmonic numbers can be written as an integral, we can actually evaluate this as a double integral. This is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t to the x over 1 minus t dt dx, right? This is the, nth har is the xth harmonic number, and this is the integration that you see here. So this is everything in brackets, right? But what we're going to do, since the bounds are the same for both integrals, and this is a convergent integral, we're going to simply exchange the integration. So when I do dx first and then dt, this 1 over 1 minus t is not going to depend on x, so I will be able to factor it out. So it's going to appear like this. The integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t to the x d, uh, x dt. Right, we've simply just brought it in. Now, each of these individual terms will converge over this, over this inter interval, so we can simply write it as two different pieces. So this is going to be the in integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t. So we can integrate each of these uh, essentially point-wise, or term-wise, I guess you would say. So the integral of 1 with respect to x is simply going to be x, and we're evaluating it from 0 to 1, minus, what's the integral of minus t to the x? It's minus t to the x divided by ln of t, right? And that's being evaluated from 0 to 1, uh, uh, d, d, t, right? I've done, the, I've done the x integration. Now, now we just simply have to plug in our bounds and evaluate what it is equal to. So plugging in 1 for x gives 1, plugging in 0 for x gives 0. Plugging in 1 for x here gives t over the natural logarithm of t. Plugging in 0 for x gives 1 over the natural logarithm of t. So we're going to end up with 1 over 1 minus t times 1. Uh, minus, I'll be thorough. 1 minus 0, right? Minus, what happens when we plug in 1 for x here? We're going to get t over ln of t. So we get minus t over ln of t. And when we plug in 0 here, we're going to get t to the 0, which is 1, divided by ln of t. Right? So we actually get minus minus that, so plus that. So we get plus 1 over ln t, right? dt. Combining like terms and deleting things, right? The 0 doesn't matter. We can actually write this as 1 minus t over ln t, right? And so what we end up with is the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t times 1 plus 1 minus t over natural logarithm of t dt. Now doing one more simplification, we simply distribute the 1 minus t in. 1 times that is, of course, the thing, one, 1 over 1 minus t. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t. And now look what happens. This 1 over 1 minus t and this 1 minus t cancel. And we'll simply be left with plus 1 over the natural logarithm of t. This looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? So what we've done here is we've integrated the harmonic function from 0 to 1, where h sub x is simply the continuous version of the harmonic numbers. And we're left with the fact that this integral, this definite integral, is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the quantity 1 over 1 minus t plus 1 over the natural logarithm of t dt. But we've seen this before. We've seen this before from a very, very special frenemy of ours. This is Papa Flammy's Putnam Challenge question that he addressed back in April of last year, a very long time ago, and he showed, he showed that this is equal to, you guessed it, the Euler Mascheroni constant. The Euler Macaroni itself, right? 0 0.577 dot dot dot. And if you want to see the full proof that this is actually true, I will link to his video in this video. But this is an amazing fact. The, that means that simply put, I'm going to erase all of this now, that means that simply put, the integral over the harmonic numbers from 0 to 1 is exactly the euler mascheroni constant. More specifically, we showed it's equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t 
plus 1 over the natural logarithm of t dt. Right? This is the integral that Papa Flammy addressed, and he showed that it was equal to this. Because this is equal to this, it must be the case that the area under the curve of the harmonic numbers from 0 to 1 is equal to the oily macaroni constant. And this is the piece, this is the silver bullet right here, folks, that we're going to need to prove a very, very amazing generalization later on. A very, very amazing generalization. Can anybody guess what that amazing generalization is? Well, we're going to prove not what the integral from 0 to 1 of the harmonic numbers is. We're going to prove what the integral from 0 to n of the harmonic numbers is. Dun, dun, dun. This is my next generalization bullet, Papa Flammy. Bring it on. Quick little thing, this channel has an Instagram, so it is at what the hectagon, of course, and it has a Twitter, and it is of course naturally, of course naturally, naturally, of course, also at what the hectagon, and my email is the incorrectly spelled what the hectagon, why spell check before you make the email, right, that you can't then change, at gmail. Com. Now, all of these are in the description if you don't want to have to somehow watch the video and pause it and actually write it down. That's the, uh, that's the stuff. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,